Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the master of ceremonies, Mr. Stanley Tucci. Uh, Stanley, welcome to London. So, so good to have you here. Thank you. Um, first of all, I've always wanted to ask you this question. Do I smell of roses? <laughs> always. <laughs> yeah, no. Because <laughs> if not, I'm going to market that fragrance. Um, as an Academy Award nominee, how do you go about choosing your roles? Because I'm guessing that once that, that accolade came your way, you know, roles are, are thrown at you left, right, and center, and it becomes much more difficult to make choices. No, that's a lovely thought, <laughs> but that's not necessarily the truth. Um, uh, things did get maybe a little easier for a bit after that, but, you know, this business is very fickle, and it sort of, you have ebbs and flows. Um, a lot of times, if you're heralded for a specific kind of award, people... A specific kind of role. People might want you to recreate that role over and over again in different incarnations, and I think you have to try not to do that if you can. Um, I choose roles um, for a number of reasons. I choose roles because the role is interesting and it's something I can sink my teeth into. It's something that uh, I haven't done before, something that's a challenge. Um, and sometimes I choose roles because I really like the, the film. Um, and or like the director, or I want to work with a certain person. Of course, I mean, obviously, if the role isn't anything substantial, then I won't. Then I won't do it. Um, and sometimes you choose roles. I mean, Edward G. Robinson was a you know great actor, as you know, many years ago. Said he did three movies a year, and he did one for the location, one for the money, and one for the art. <laughs> And is that it's a pretty good way to <laughs> Yeah, that's to not live. a bad yeah, way to make yeah, a living, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, because I, I did read that, that when Peter Jackson came to you for the, for the Lovely Bones that you, you read the part and you didn't like the character or the role in any way. So what, if that was true, what was it that turned you around to become that character? Well, the thing, I never, I have difficulty watching anything where kids are, you know, mm. get hurt and, so, you know, that's... <clears throat> but I think, I think one of the things that was interesting, was the, first of all, the script was beautiful. It was a beautiful story, sad story, but a beautiful story. And I thought it was a, a sort of necessary story. And also, the character was well written. We just had to make sure that he wasn't the sort of mustache twirling uh, villain. And I think whenever you play a, 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 an evil person or a, a bad person, you have to remember that, that person is a person. Mm. They're not, a, a, they say, well, he was a monster. Well, he wasn't a monster, he was, he was a person. That's what makes his acts, his acts were monstrous, but he was a person, and that's what makes it even more horrible. So I think the, the challenging thing is to take a character like that and to make him as be believable as possible, that, that's the ch as human as possible. We have to talk about The Hunger Games. I saw it uh, last week. It is nothing short of stunning, and you have now made me go buy a book because I oh, need really? to know what happens in the yeah. next one. It's become painful now. I, yeah, books. Yeah, do you remember, remember books? Remember those? Wow. Yeah. The, the thing is about books now, we all download them on iPads and stuff like that, and we can't go to book signings because just one iPad, it's ruined. No, it's all over. It's yeah, all over. It. You yeah. have to find yeah. another You're one. You're Sharpie. You're <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about that character. Um, what was it about that, that that attracted you? Because obviously the world knew about these books before the world knew about these movies. So what was yeah. it that... that Maybe Gary Ross brought to you. Uh, I think I think one of the things that I uh, that I liked was was how extreme the character was, um, uh, and and that he that the, and and the darkness of the of the story. Um, and he was this kind of really disturbing, uh, almost like pornographic. Pornographic is the wrong word, but I mean that's a really the wrong word. I was going to just double check I don't and know I watched that. the no. same film as you. No, no, no. Wow. Well, you didn't see it. the first cut. <laughs> uh, uh, it's, just, it, it's just extreme and, and grotesque. And I kind of like that grotesque, grotesquery. <laughs> grotesquery is a slightly safer word than It's a safer word, yeah. Um, but, I mean, do you kind of go look at that role and go, I get to, the, the, I mean, the teeth, let's be fair, incredible. The hair. Is that part of it? Do you love that whole an actor dressing up, that whole becoming something new? I love it. I, you know, I wanted to become an actor because I didn't want to spend my life as myself. <laughs> you know, so I think that, and when you get to know me more, you'll know why. <laughs> the the I, that I, character I, in the lonely boat, yeah, lonely yeah, boat no, is a little bit too. Yeah, close yeah, to yeah. No, not that guy. No, okay, no, I was no. nervous. Then. Um, I love all that stuff. I love. That's one of the reasons that we act. It's. You know, it's about, it's about being playful. It's doing that thing that we used to do when we were kids. 
<clears throat> you know, you pretend, you pretend you're somebody else. And what do you do to pretend you're somebody else? You change your voice, you change your clothes, you change your teeth, you change your shoes, you change your whatever. And then you pretend then you're somebody else. It's what, what's really scary is that I'm just the teeth away and a bit of hair dye from I know. Uh, yeah, I, didn't wanna, really, I didn't say it. No, I mean, it's, nope, hey, I, I didn't think we're say all it. nervous by it. But you actually, can get there. You get he's there. like an idol now. Yeah. How, m <laughs> how, much, how much work is that on set for you? Because uh, we don't see you as much as we'd like, and I don't hate to use the word sting, uh, scene stealing, but you kind of do. Um, Th thank you. I actually steal the scenes from myself. <laughs> That's how... Shameless it is. <laughs> and Toby Jones. Yeah, and Toby, oh, he's great. I wish there were more of him in the movie. He's, he's great. It's almost like it should just you be you two, like director's commentary. We should have <laughs> you, you guys doing the DVD. For the DVD. That's yeah, that, what it that should would be. be. Funny, yeah. But I mean, how much, how much work is that on set for you? Are you there for a, a couple of days? Are you there for a few months? Are you there for the duration? Uh, uh, I'm there usually for about uh, five days. Oh, really? Mm hmm and was that the same for, the, for part one? Yeah, part one was about five days. This one was maybe a little less, I think. Uh, and the next one will be even less. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Is that a spoiler? Yeah, I'm sad about it, really. <laughs> <laughs> it's a spoiler and I'm sad. They're yeah. going to drop you into the game. Yeah, no, yeah, that's yeah. not no, going to no, happen. No, no, no. I, I started reading the new book. Um, mm. So, I mean, in terms of you get the script, are you, are you kind of signed into these kind of franchise movies now? Do, is that something that when well, you read the first one, you're like, I want to be part of this whole yeah, thing? Yeah, to me, it, it really it made mm. sense because of also mm. the number of days you work. It wasn't a, a huge, it wasn't a huge commitment. Um, it was financially good, and, and it was a great role. But also, it's at their discretion. So if you suddenly go, oh, my God, I love this, they can very easily go on the next movie. Well, that's great, but you're not in it. You know? So <laughs> that's so the way it works. You so know it's you a, mentioned just sort of double-sided you know, double coin. You know, you mentioned the three reasons to do a movie, the location, the fun. I think right. we know which one right. this was now. Uh, let's talk about your, your relationship. Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good recovery, yeah. Stanley. <laughs> let's talk about um, working with people like Jennifer as well. Oh, she's great. She's great. They're all great. I mean, here's the thing, you know, um, the people like Jennifer and Josh and Liam, you know, they're these young people who are so self-assured and not arrogant and not pretentious and they are without affectation. They're just like really hardworking professional actors who, who, who are serious about what they do, but they don't take themselves seriously. They're, it's wonderful. I wish I could have been like that at their age. I'm sure you were. I mean, you've, you've, I mean, the amount of films you've been in, you go through that list. Weren't you both, uh, you and Jennifer in Monk? Maybe not in the same episode, but I believe oh, she... did she do one? She did an episode oh, really? of Monk. I think she was like a cheerleader or something. Does oh, anyone know? Really? People are going like, Monk? No. That lady over there is going, I don't know this Monk program of which you two <laughs> old people talk about. <laughs> yeah, I think you were both in Monk. Right? Yeah, I guess. I didn't know that. Well, Tony Shalhoub is a friend of mine for many years, so that's why I did the show, yeah. Not for the location, the... No, it no, doesn't no, matter. No, no. Let's not... No. <laughs> So, I mean, in, t in terms of director, I mean, when this movie uh, changed directors, obviously Francis Lawrence took over, did that, did that change anything for you? Did that, did that, were you more aware of any changes within the movie? No, not necessarily. It's a, it's a different, the movie looks quite different, I think, than the original film. Um, you know, and they're very different directors. They're both really good directors and very accomplished directors, but very different. Gary's much more <coughs> gregarious and garrulous and sort of physically involved and, and Francis remains at a distance a bit but it is very specific uh, about what he wants but and also so laid back and relaxed and so they're both like a pleasure to work, work with they're just totally different acting uh, directing styles how do you find going from being a writer producer and director yourself to then working with people like Francis and and and, and, and established directors of, of big budget movies when you yourself make those films. Do you, is it hard being directed by a director? Some directors, yes, because some directors just really uh, are not. I'm just going to say are not very articulate, just like I'm being right now. <laughs> uh, are not um, necessarily articulate when it comes to uh, imparting what they want to say, what they need, or what they need from an actor. Mm. And <coughs> unfortunately, this isn't something that's necessarily taught particularly well in. In, in, in schools. Um, and it w I've, I have t taught a, a class at NYU and a, and a class at Columbia with the graduate students, the graduate film students, on this very 
subject. Mm. Because, and Phil Hoffman, I think, did the, did the exact same thing at Columbia bef before I did. It's, re it's really, really important um, because if you think about it, those are the primary, those are the primary objects mm. in your film, these living, breathing things called people who are saying lines. So this is a huge part of the curriculum that's, that's left out of um, film school, and, and it, needs, it needs to be addressed. I mean, going back to then, in terms of The Hunger Games, are you given free reign, or, or do you know this character so well from doing the first movie that actually, you know, you, you know this character? Yeah, I know him, and I know him, and, and Gary was very, very encouraging and, and wanted uh, improvisation like crazy, and, and Francis did not dissuade me from doing so. Um, so you, each time you try to make it fresh, uh, and, and you try to invent, but you don't want to invent just for the sake of inventing. Mm. You, you want to invent in, in a way that each time you do it, you're taking it to, you're taking it to another level. You're, you're making it richer and richer and richer. So if you don't want to kind of express with those lines, can you just stick to what was on the script? Yeah, can you, you can stick, stick to, to what's on the script, sure. But, yeah, yeah, but then it's more fun to just play around. <laughs> yeah, I can only imagine. I, yeah. Like I say, I want yeah. to see the outtakes. Yeah. Not the pornographic. Not the pornographic not, ones, not, No. 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 It's not going to happen, people. Um, so in terms of, in terms of you as a, as a director, is that the direction that you want to go in? Is that something? Is, is the reason for... Many people sort of say the reason they, they act and work on, on bigger budget movies is to, is to finance the smaller projects that they want to be part of or want to create. Was that always something as a dream for you? Yeah. I mean, I, I started directing movies about mm, 15 years ago, and I've done four movies over the years. And... Yes, b part of doing bigger budget movies or television, things like that, is that, that you can find really great roles and you can also make money so that then you, if you do direct a film, you're going to have to lose a, a year of your life yeah. making that film with pre-production, casting, uh, shooting, editing, and all that. So you need to have money in the bank in order to do that. So that's the real reason behind it. What do you find... It's not the real reason, but it's one of the reasons. Oh, I mean, what for you... Is the ultimate is the ultimate movie? Is there a movie that you have had in, in planned for your entire life? Has there always been this one idealistic film? Um, I have a couple movies. Yeah, one in particular maybe that I really like. A movie about Giacometti, the the artist who lived um, in the uh, from the turn of the century to um, 1965, and and he was uh, probably one of the most interesting contemporary artists. Uh, of all time, one of the most important sculptors and one of the most articulate men about the creative process. So I have a movie that I've written that I'd like to make about him, uh, hopefully in the next two years. It's a very small movie. It would cost almo almost nothing. Um, but there's that story. There are lots of stories I want to tell. Another book that I recently adapted called City of Women that takes place in Berlin during World War II. That's all about a, a, a number of, of, of women who, because who, si Berlin was called the city of women because so many men weren't there during the war. And uh, they ran, they did everything. Uh, so, that, so that's the plan? Do you put that kind of five-year, ten-year plan down? You do your best to put together a plan. And in, but in this, as we know, in any business or in any life, you can't plan. You can do your, you can do your best and then you just kind of take it day by day. Uh, I have a question for you, and this is a, this is a weird one because this is this is more about my role. I got a part in Jack the Giant Slayer. You know the movie Jack the Giant Slayer, of course, uh, which Stanley huge is in. Huge hit, huge uh, hit. <laughs> I had role of I think Brian Singer said I was guard thirty nine, uh, which was a big part. Uh, didn't have a speaking role. I got cut, Stanley. Yeah. Here's my question: What did I do wrong? Guard 39, I had my spear slightly higher than every other of the 38 no. guards, and I'm st even in 3D you couldn't see me. No. You, you should have been number 38. I <laughs> Is that what it was? <laughs> Singers at the back going like, yeah, we've yeah, just got yeah, one yeah, too we, many. Yeah, we've yeah, got one too yeah, many. Uh, yeah. um, and again, uh, what was it like making movies like that? Because you, you have such a varied scope of characters that you've played. I was really happy to be offered that role. Um, I had never played... I uh, was. I, I know, was I know, I, I know. I was I very know. happy to be offered and that it role. It really was some of your best work. <laughs> it's a shame it won't be seen. The, um, <laughs> I, really, I really liked that role. I'd never been... I don't think I'd ever played a Brit before. And it was fun to play that sort of real mustache-twirling um, 
bad guy. Yeah. You know, you know, sort of the Basil Rathbone and kind of, you know, I, I love all that stuff. I thought it was really fun. The one Peter Jackson wouldn't let you do. <laughs> yes, right. Yeah, the one. Yeah, the Sitting one. Sitting in the corner, going, there, you must yeah. find the child. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, in terms of in terms of making those choices, making those decisions, what was you know how aware were you of things like the Hunger Games when that came to you? Did you know of the phenomenon that was the Hunger Games? No, I didn't. Uh, my wife, my wife told me because uh, she's a literary agent, uh, and um, Gary sent me the script. I said, to, I said to her, I said, well, you know what, what my, uh, my friend Gary sent me this movie called The Hunger Games, and I didn't even finish the sentence, and she said, do it. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? She said, oh my God, don't you know that those books are so successful, and they're so good, I if the script is good, you have to do it, and I read it, it was a fantastic script, um, and so I did it. And did you know the character at that part? When, were you offered a particular character, yes, or yes. were you offered the, yeah, the idea of being yeah. in The Hunger Games? I was Games. originally offered Katniss, and then, you know... <laughs> I, I chose Caesar. Now I've seen the second one. You would have rocked that dress. There you go. I'm just saying. Right? Um, I and know. the heck? Please. Yeah. I, I wasn't <laughs> offered anything. No? Well, Not that's because they saw your work in the other movie. Yeah, yeah. I can't help feel you may have been too yeah. I didn't even get a poster credit. It's disgraceful. No. It's disgraceful. Um, let's talk about the, the, the future of The Hunger Games for you then. I know you were saying that you, you have a slightly less... Yeah, I think I, don't know. I haven't read it yet, but I think... You haven't? Not, uh, no, I haven't read the script yet. Should so I tell you? Oh, yeah. I was going to say, yeah. I can tell you what happens. I've just bought yeah, yeah, a book. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and in the future for you, because I know we talked a little bit uh, before, and I've read a little bit about you starting out doing theatre as well. Um, was, that, was that something that, again... Was a start for you, or was theatre a, a first love for you? No, it was a start. It was the way you started. It was what you were trained in. You know, you were trained in the theatre. And, and so you went and did theatre, and then if you got other jobs, that was great, too. Um, but you always went back to the theatre. I haven't done a play as an actor in about ten years uh, or so. I directed a play on Broadway three years ago, and there are other plays that I want to direct here and in, in, and in America. I haven't been on stage, like I said, for a while, only because I've had young children and, and you live a, um, a completely different life from them. You, you never get to have dinner with them. You never get to put them in bed. You can't wake up with them in the morning because you've gone to bed at 1 o'clock. And, you know, so I haven't done it for, Sounds for like quite bliss. a while. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But um, so I haven't done it uh, for a while. But I, as I said, I'll go to the theater and, and direct, and direct theater. Um, before we open up questions to these guys who have probably got a billion and one Hunger Games questions for you, uh, you know it's going to happen. Yeah. Um, I only discovered this recently, and, and please forgive me, uh, you have a cookbook. Oh, yeah. Well, my parents, I, when, after I did the, the, the first movie that I co-directed called Big Night, um, the, um, uh, I wanted to put together a book of my family's recipes and recipes of my, my, my friend Johnny Scapine, who's a French-trained Italian, northern Italian chef. So we put together the Southern Italian recipes of my family, his recipes, put them together in a book that William Morrow published. It did really well, was around for a little bit, went out of print, and then a while ago we looked and we saw that it was for sale on like Amazon or eBay or something for like, you know, $3,000 copies of it, which didn't really, I didn't quite understand that. <laughs> it must be a hell of a book. So, so we, uh, my wife, as I said, was a literary agent, we, I said, I want to republish this book. Uh, but I, don't, I never liked the look of it, so I want to redo it. We redid it and, uh, and brought it out last year. Simon & Schuster brought it out. Um, so if anybody finds it and buys it, you should, because it's a good book. And uh, the, the money that I, that my portion of the money goes to the food bank for New York. I'm on the board of the food bank for New York. Okay, so well it's, a, it's, f it's for a worthy, worthy cause. I, I just... I genuinely uh, bought this book yesterday. Oh, you did? Yeah. You're buying lots of books well, lately, I, uh, No, you? it's like twice, but this oh. one's got pictures, so it's a lot yeah, easier. It's easier. Uh, it hasn't arrived yet, but here's the thing, and I don't want to uh, kind of ruin this, because I didn't pay the $3,000 for it. I paid $17.99. $17.99. Pounds? S set dollars. Dollars? Yeah, yeah, $17.99. Oh, That's really? Bad. Have I got a bad one? Have I got like a second-hand copy? Yeah, you I don't might, want a food yeah, stain in my copy. Got, no, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but here's the thing. No, it that costs extra. <laughs> it then cost me $30 to have it shipped. Wait, we have it shipped where? To the UK. But they sell it here. There's a British Don't version. ruin it for me now. <laughs> what is a, a, well, then you're going to have to take all the recipes and you're going to have to you know, convert the, them. Yeah. There's a British you. version. You could have gotten it for like 20 pounds. 
I'll be honest, Stanley, I probably won't terrible. be making the you're recipes. You're not really good at buying books, are no. you? Yeah. <laughs> this is why I've never done it in my life. Can I read you a little quote? This is a quote, and I hope this I don't is know. genuinely true. It, it depends I on what it says. I hope this is so true. So this is, this is Stanley, and, and, and this is a bit about your cooking, and this is uh, why apparently you fell in love with your wife. Okay, can I all read right. this? Yeah, all right. This is it. They apparently fell in love, okay. Um, I fell in love with my wife after the light hit the carcass of the suckling pig as she ripped the flesh from its bare bones. Nothing screams romance like a hog roast. That's right, yeah. Was it, were you cooking? How does that quote come about? Well, okay, she, all right. She, <laughs> <laughs> sounds so disgusting. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I know. She, I um, moved the chair this way, and yeah, not just yeah. because of the lonely, yeah. the lovely bones. She, um, well, we, she was coming to stay with me. We first started dating. She came to the house we were living in in Westchester, New York, and she said, "Oh, let's do, we're going to do a, a weekend party." She said, "Let's do a let's do a suckling pig." I said, "Oh, great, love suckling, great." So we went and we got a suckling pig from the butcher, and cooked the suckling pig. You know, we had to skewer the pig, but it was a little too big, so we had to decapitate the pig. The pig was already dead, <laughs> if that helps anyone, and so we skewered it. You know. And then the next morning, we had some suckling pig left over. And, and the first thing she did when she woke up was she had on her robe. She was in the kitchen. And she was sort of, as she was having a cup of tea, just ripping off the rest of the, the flesh from the bones to save the meat. And I thought, oh, that's fantastic. That's just sexy. It's sexy to me. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> and she is the one who said, it, we were re relating this story to the New York Times. And she said, it was the way the light hit the carcass. She right. got a sister. The huh? trouble is, I know she has. Yeah, <laughs> is it? Yeah, yeah. Has she got a sister? Yes, she does. But you know she's married. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. She's ruined. Both yes, times. My Emily Blunt is my sister-in-law, and she, yeah. And Emily would probably do the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've met Emily a few times, but it's still not going to get me invited around for Christmas, is it? No, no, no. not at all. No. Not at all. No. Uh, we have some questions from you guys. I know you have plenty of questions for Stanley. Should we open this up, Stanley? Is there anyone particularly that you're scared of or like the look of? I'm not answering that. Okay, I, fair no. enough, fair enough. I'll do the picking. There is a lady right over there that's, uh, that's waving frantically. Let's get a question from this lady. Hello. Hello, Mr. Tucci. Hi. I have to say, I've followed your career since 1995. Oh, my God. When you, I know. When I was just 10. <laughs> I was pretty small, too. Yeah. Um, I have to say, the series was Murder One. Oh, yeah. And it was groundbreaking as far as I was concerned, writing, acting, the whole story. Thanks. I really would love to know what thoughts, memories you have of playing Richard Cross and that series. Oh, well, you know, that was interesting. I know that was a big hit in England, that, that series. Um, I really liked that series. And it was, you know, Stephen Bochco, who did the series, was very ahead of his time because... You know, now, uh, I guess 24, many years later, was this series that sort of hooked everybody in for to watch for a year, and then other series sort of followed suit. But nobody really watched that series when we did it. It was heralded by the critics, and but it didn't have a big following. Um, but I really liked playing that character. The hard part was I didn't really know what was going to happen. So at a certain point... I had to I had to go into Stephen's office and I had to say, look, I, I this is really great and it's a great job and I appreciate it, but I, I had I need to have I have no idea what I'm doing. I can't just go in every 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 week and get a script, but and I don't know when I'm doing a scene, I don't know why I'm doing that scene. I need to know what's going to happen. And then he told me what happened, but I couldn't breathe a word of it to anyone. You basically had to say, like, am I guilty? And he goes, then he finally goes, no, you're not. I was like, okay, good. All right, great. Uh, thank you very much. This lady at the back here. Can we, oh, we've picked a really bad position, haven't we? I'm so sorry. What? We're going to, this lovely lady over here. There we go. Hello, Mrs. Tucci. Um, hi. Hi. Uh, I'm actually a freshman at NYU, and oh. at the orientation, they talked about how you taught a class, and it was one of the reasons why I decided to go to NYU. Oh, you're kidding. It was really just a couple of classes. I'm so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you probably weren't even born when I taught Were you taught expecting it. Stanley to still be there? I'm just <laughs> no, no. Oh, thank it's God. Just, yeah. It's just the prestige of the school <laughs> and everything. But um, So 
Um, do you ever take a part of the character with you? Like when you're researching it, do you, is there ever a part of the character that you're like, oh, okay, I want that to be like a part of my life. Do you ever take that like aspect with you after the job? No, I don't. Well, that's an interesting question. I think sometimes the character stays with you while you're doing the job and a little bit after maybe the an accent might stay with you or certain behaviors or something like that. <clears throat> but I think you, what you take away is the... Is the um, is the res is what you take what you take away from the research that you've done? If you really if you really had to do research for the character, do you know what I mean? If particularly if it's a historical character, you can learn you learn so much, and you get access to stuff that uh, maybe a lot of people wouldn't have access to, which is really kind of kind of great. Um, but I think I always believe that that acting is you know uh, that everybody has a multiple is a multiple personality that we all have all these people inside of us and actors just allow themselves uh, accessibility to access to the, to those characters so i think what you've done is you've taken an aspect of your personality and you've given it and you've given it full bloom and then you can go to it whenever whenever you choose to which is a really maybe good thing or a really disturbing thing who knows <laughs> Do you ever call back on characters when you're when you're when you're in a, in a in a new performance when you have a new role? Is there any time you go back and think something that worked with a previous character? I can bring that to this role, or do you try and do everything fresh and clean and start again? I think you try to do it fresh and clean and start again. Yeah, I mean, listen, there's only so much one can change oneself without it being without it becoming almost like an affectation. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so you're always bringing something of you to, to it. Um, but I think you try to start clean Keep it each fresh. time. Yeah. Uh, let's go this side, this lovely lady right here. Let me pass the mic over. Hello there, what's your name? Hi, I'm Rosa. Hi, Rosa. Hello, Mr. Tucci. Hi. Um, while you were creating the role for Caesar Flickerman, Flickerman um, as the MC of The Hunger Games, which is basically a reality show, did you ever think about what is it about reality shows that attracts so much public attention? and popularity? Yeah, I'll be honest, I, I don't get it. I, I don't, I'm not a reality show guy. I don't, I don't watch them, I don't, I don't understand it. I think that people, I don't know, maybe it's there but for the grace of God go I. Do you know what I mean? That you're watching these people and often it's very uncomfortable sort of awful situations and maybe, I don't know, do we enjoy seeing other people suffer? Is that why we like them? I don't, I honestly, I don't know. I think there are plenty of people that would like the Hunger Games to be in the Big Brother house, and we, I think we, I think, <laughs> yeah. I think there's a lot of characters we kind of go, let them go at each other, and we'll yeah. just come back in six weeks and see who's alive. Yeah. But, so yeah. I, yeah, I, I think she's got a point. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's basically the Hunger Games is basically like go back to ancient Rome, take the what happened in the Colosseum, and then take the reality shows of today and just put them together, and put them together, and that's what that's what you have. Uh, this lady at the front, should we get a question? I know you've been keen to. There we go. Uh, yeah, hi, just a question about your character in The Hunger Games. Uh, do you think he's ultimately a bad person in the same way that perhaps Pre President Snow is, obviously not to that extreme, or is he just a sort of a product of the society that he's grown up in? And Yeah, I think, number, I think he's partly a product of the society that he's grown up in, but he hasn't shied away from it. He hasn't kept quiet. He's become a, he's a, he's a, uh, uh, he's a as I said on Twitter today, or whatever you call it, uh, he's a flamboyant propagandist. Uh, it's not like he's shunning the spotlight and just sort of following the status quo. He's outwardly promoting it like Lenny Riefenstahl did in, during uh, the Nazi regime. Did you get to work with, with Donald this time? Did you get to see him on set much? No. Not at all? No. Does that, is that frustrating kind of, as an actor yeah, when you kind of uh, go, yeah, you look I'm at the cast such and amazing. I'm admirer of his and Phil Hoffman, whom I know a bit. And I had to work with Jeffrey just for a minute. But, you know, you saw what I did. I mean, if I'm not with those people, then I didn't work yeah. with them. It's yeah. weird. You can make a, a number of movies with people over the years and never meet them. Is that, is that frustrating as an actor? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes you, when you're like, oh, I want to have a scene with that guy. Yeah. You know, I love that guy. Yeah. You know, it doesn't happen. Uh, let's get another question. Uh, should we get someone at the back there? The lady over there. There we go. Hello. Um, obviously, you act and direct. Do you have a preference for either one? Or? No, I like doing both. I like acting. I like directing. I, 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 
I'm at the point now where I haven't directed for a number of years, so I'm I'm ready. I haven't directed a movie for about five years, so I'm I'm ready to do it again. And I directed a play, as I said, three years ago, and I'm ready to do that again. So it's good to I like to bounce around. If I have no attention span. So if you need guard thirty nine, yeah, it's right, worth, it's worth a try. Yeah, maybe a whole <laughs> Brian Singer movie about about, <laughs> about thirty nine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, short, short one, but it'd be, Gutted. be a good Three one. 3D. Yeah. Putting the stick up I twice know. as hard. Nothing. Nothing. You're still in it. Yeah. Uh, this lady at the back here. That's it. You there. Yeah, so don't worry. We'll bring a mic. To there we go. There we go. Thank you very much. What's Hi, your question? Uh, um, this may seem like a cliche question, but do you have a favorite role you've played so far? No, I don't really have a favorite. You know, I wish I had a favorite something. <laughs> I don't have a favorite color or a favorite food or a favorite anything. I do have a favorite child of my three children. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible, isn't it? Sometimes Which one is it? Just out of curiosity. Yeah, yeah, in case, uh, in case I get the Christmas invite. I'll, I'll tell you later. Okay, okay fair enough. Later, yeah. <laughs> um, sometimes it is fun to just go up to one of them while the others are in earshot and just go, you're my favorite. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, no, I don't, I don't, I don't. <laughs> but I'll tell you, I, I, I really like playing this role a lot. Um, I liked playing um, uh, The Fell and the Devil Wears Prada. That was, that was, that was, that was really fun. Um, I'm trying to think. Where, there's a movie that I made many, many years ago that was a comedy that m maybe probably no one has seen called Undercover Blues that was this extreme, sort of almost a farcical comedy, and that was really, there was a character there that was fun. And in terms of movies, is, is comedy, is, is the straighter roles, what, what is it about the roles that you pick? Is there a particular genre, if you like, that you particularly want to go for? No, I like all genres. I, you know, to be able to do farce or to drama or comedy, you should be able to do all of them. And, and it's fun to do all of them. Again, a steady diet of, of just doing drama would be, that would be so boring. Or just doing the same sort of type of comedy all the time would be boring. Mm. So it's nice to to shake it up. And, the, and a lot more supporting roles than anything else. Is that something time-wise that y you choose to do that? Is it? Is no, it? it's just that nobody cast me in the lead. So I that's, find that hard all. to believe. Well, it's true. I'm I know the feeling. Don't be upset. But <laughs> 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 right. uh, we have a question from this man right at the front here. Let's go and find it. Hi, thanks. Uh, just sort of following on from a previous question, um, with um, the role of uh, George Harvey um, in The Lovely Bones, so it's an amazing performance, um, with a character like that, do you find um, that you're able to, to leave him on the set or does that stay with you pretty much the whole movie? Can you sort of not sort of escape him and you have to almost become him for the whole of the filming? You can't become him for the whole of the filming because you'd, you'd commit suicide. It's just hor it's horrible. Um, I think that was one of the reasons. I knew that he didn't look like me. I hoped he didn't look like me. Uh, I, I had a very specific idea of what, what he looked like, and we were able to, to achieve that. Um, one, but once I stopped shooting, that I couldn't wait to get all that stuff off. The, you know, the wig, the makeup, the paunch that I added, the mustache and all that stuff. Once it all came, I had to have this stuff on me and then strip it all off so by the end of the day I would look in the mirror and there was, there was me again. Uh, in fact, I just saw the makeup person the other night who did that, Peter King, who was a brilliant Oscar winning um, makeup, makeup person. Um, and one of the things that we, we talked about was you know that that had to happen because it was so awful. But there's no question, doing the research for that was very, very difficult. Uh, I could only do it in sort of little increments, uh, looking at uh, videos or looking at um, uh, just even just photographs of those people and what they looked like and putting together the, the character, reading stuff about them, reading books about that stuff. And it's just hor it just was horrible. So it stays with you. It's always there under the surface. And, and it was a really long shoot. And I couldn't wait for it to be over. I was just thrilled for it to be over. Not that I didn't have a good time. Not that it wasn't. Peter was wonderful. They were all wonderful. But you, you don't want to, you don't want to, be like that. At even if you're pretending to be like that. Do you have the ability to snap out of a character once they've cut, or, or, or your scenes are over for the day? Can you go back to a trailer and, you, like you say, you remove the makeup and and, and etc. Do you snap out of it immediately? Can you be back to Stanley again? Or yeah. 
or is, does that take time? Yeah, there's sometimes a little like, you know, a little transitional period, like you have to go into like a, you know, people stay away. Yeah, from like the Stanley airlock Fry. chamber, you know, <laughs> like in between space and and the capsule. You know what I mean? You have that <laughs> that decompression chamber. Decompressing it's Stanley. Like <laughs> that, and then you just make sure that you have a martini. No, I swear to God, in the makeup in the makeup trailer, and that helps a lot. That's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I think we have time for one more question. Let's get there. There's someone right at the back there waving really, really high. There we go. Uh, hello, Mr. Tucci. Uh, I'm sorry that I've actually heard of, first heard of you last year during the Hunger Games when you were part of that ensemble cast. You didn't know about me um, before that? I said I'm sorry again. It's incredible. Um, it's incredible. Next. I said to you, when I get... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Had you heard of God 39? <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. To be honest, when I get home, I'm going to start on The Lovely Bones on all your film filmography because you sound like a great guy and I feel you're a great actor, sir. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> is there any act... My question is, is there any actor you'd love to work with in the near future and why? Oh, God, there are so many that I want to work with. I want to, my, Miranda Richardson is a great friend of mine. I want to work with her. I, I, I think we're, I'm going to do this thing with Michael Gambon, whom I cannot wait to work with, and Sophie Gabrol, who was in the original uh, Danish uh, series, The Killing. Um, there, are so, there are so many actors that I, that I admire that, that I would love to work with. Isabelle Huppert is somebody that I'd love to work with. Um, there are count, countless, countless actors. Thank you very much. I believe that's all we have time for. Ladies and gentlemen, if you will do me a favour and thank the legend that is Mr. <laughs> Stanley Tucci. <laughs> sir, and may guard the odds. 39. <laughs> <laughs> may the odds be in your favour, sir. You. <laughs> uh, thank the you star all. of The Hunger Games. The movie's out on November the 22nd. It is nothing short of stunning. Ladies and gentlemen, Stanley Tucci. Thanks. <laughs>